This podcast was recorded on Gubby Gubby land and pays respects to the elders past, present and emerging. Welcome back to the podcast, guys. I feel like I haven't recorded in a while. I know I've been a little sporadic since the beginning of my pregnancy with the podcast, but I felt like let's just jump on, do a little bit of a life update and just chat about sort of like some things that have been going on. And yeah, I really also want to speak into the ways that I've been like sort of preparing my pregnancy for labor and birth, because it was one of the questions I was asked this week over on my Instagram question box um, on my story. And it was actually really interesting when I was like thinking about all the ways that I have been preparing for labor and birth. And obviously I am over halfway of my pregnancy now. Um, Well, not so much obvious since I'm speaking into a microphone and not on a camera, but I am over halfway of my pregnancy. It's my like first time that I'm going into the birthing space. So it will be interesting to look back on and like listen back to this and all the things once I've actually gone through the experience of labor and birth. But I thought it could still be cool to just bring that answer over here and just share with you the ways I am preparing and maybe like a little bit more in depth to like why I'm doing the things that I'm doing. It's really interesting this journey of pregnancy because it's not just a journey of like you're bringing a child into this world and like having to sort of prepare with that transition and like feel into that transition but it's also saying goodbye to a part of yourself as well which I think I didn't really hear many women speaking about like you don't really hear much about how like the birth of a child is actually the birth of a mother, but like it quite literally is. So there's a lot there that's been, you know, hanging around just of like, oh my gosh, like I'm never going to experience life the same again. And it's a really cool concept, but it's also one of those things where it's like, oh my gosh, Jai and I just realized like, well, it's been a conversation that we've had is it's never just going to be us two again after this. Like we've had our good long haul of just us two and now it's just soon not going to just be us two and it's also like a crazy feeling to be like oh my gosh I'm in that phase of life where I'm having a kid and like you know things are just changing and things are evolving and things are in that huge transition and I can't remember if I brought it over to the podcast or if it was just something I kept over on my TikTok but at the very like well, it wasn't the start of the year, but it was the very start of my pregnancy. Prior to me actually finding out I was pregnant, I had a snake come into my healing space, um, my sacred space, space. <laughs> and I was actually in my healing room. I wasn't with a client. I was actually by myself. I just felt the call to go sit down there. And I was journaling, I think. And I just had like some things there around like actually my own like stuff with my own mom, which is really interesting when I think back on it. But I had this snake just like come into the healing space. And at the time I was like, oh my gosh, like snakes, like, you know, clearly they mean like transition, they mean rebirth, they mean change, shedding the old skin, shedding the past, all of those things. And then it was actually that afternoon that I did my pregnancy test. And how interesting is that, that then I found out I was pregnant and that snake was just like such a signal of like change is coming, rebirth is coming. And I just wanted to share that randomly because it's like that has actually been like what the theme of like it just has felt like throughout my whole pregnancy. But anyway, I want to like get a bit into like what's been going on. So pretty much I am really focused on my pregnancy journey. I've been really focused on nourishing my body and like caring for my body, myself, my nervous system in preparation for labor and birth, but also in preparation for motherhood because from like the self-education that I've been doing when the mother is balanced the baby is balanced and of course it's not me going into motherhood blindsiding myself that like we're not going to be having like the sleepless nights and we're not going to be having all of these things but it's just about preparing myself as best as possible to actually allow my experience to be as seamless as possible and not feeding so much into like the negative stigma around newborns and the negative stigma around like pregnancy and how like all of these things because I have really found that like being pregnant people are like wait till your belly is really big and then you'll be hating it you're wanting that be wanting that baby out of you or in the first trimester it was very much like oh how's like morning sickness treating you like it's never are you enjoying your pregnancy it's always from like a very negative space so I guess like the work I've really been doing lately has been so incredibly like focused on just like my mindset and ensuring that like 
I'm actually good within myself because I do feel good within myself. But sometimes when like you get like people like constantly almost trying to reaffirm or like affirm to you that like it's never going to go to plan and like all that negative stuff, it just doesn't serve you. So like I've just been really focusing on my mindset other than focusing on my mindset and strengthening that and really just being in my own energy of that. I've also been doing a lot of um, hypnobirthing. So hypnobirthing is like basically learning how to hypnotize yourself for like labor and birth because we are sold the idea, especially here in like the Western world, that birth is painful. And I mean, I haven't experienced it for myself, but I literally have one of my friends and she's been on the podcast before. Um, the podcast episode is one of my first ish ones and it's Emma's free birthing story. Highly recommend to go back and listen to that. But like I was literally with Emma this morning and she was saying, honestly, I love giving birth. Like she loves it. She thinks it's great. She thinks it's so empowering and it's shown her each time how powerful her incredible body is. That sort of conversation is very rare to come across because we are sold the idea of it's painful. You're going to tear. You're going to have to have interventions. Like we're just sold all of these stories, right? And I think for me looking at it, I'm now I'm like just completely ranting, but like for me looking at it, I don't look down on intervention. I look at it as an opportunity that we have here in the Western world to support our body if necessary. Although I believe that birth is a physiological thing and I don't believe for my own experience that it doesn't feel aligned for me to be like going in preparing to intervene, if that makes sense. So hypnobirthing has been really cool because you do a lot of work around like reprogramming your beliefs because like I speak about on this podcast all the time, it's not just us, right? Like we hold ancestral wounding. We hold, we were in our grandmother's womb as an egg within our mother. I've shared this before. And like, you know, there's all the energetic attachments, cords, all the things, stories that come from before us. Plus growing up, watching movies, hearing other women speaking. And then, like I said, being pregnant, a lot of women like to share things that are just not so helpful, especially if you are currently in the transition to becoming a new mum. So Hypnobirthing has been really cool to reprogram the subconscious, be aware of like what actually thoughts are within me and be really present with that. Hypnobirthing is also like breathing techniques, visualization, things like that. And I've been practicing breath work for so long now, and it's actually really cool to do the specific hypnobirthing breaths because I don't know, it's also building like such a connection with my beautiful little baby boy. Like I just feel so connected to my body which is ideal, right? We want to be connected to our body, especially prior to like going into like a huge life changing experience that I'm never going to, uh, sorry, that I haven't felt before. So yeah, hypnobirthing has been like a really cool like thing that I've been doing in preparation for labor and birth and also motherhood, right? Because it's regulating my nervous system, like I said, and yeah, it's just a super um, grounding practice to bring in every day and even just like in bed or like listening to pregnancy affirmations when I'm going to sleep or like when I first wake up, I'm finding is just like, it's slowly doing like that reprogramming and it's really cool. One thing I'm yet to do is actually write out a bunch of affirmations and hang them around the house. I actually yesterday went to office works and bought a bunch of like blank cards to like write my affirmations on, make it all pretty and hang them up. Um, so I'm yet to do that, but yeah, affirmations, hypnobirthing, that's sort of like hand in hand really has been really, really supportive for me so far in my journey. Um, I've also been working with a private midwife. So I think I've shared this before, like on the pregnancy diaries on YouTube, but I've got a private midwife and I've been seeing her since six weeks and I see her monthly. And then once I get to my third trimester, then I start seeing her, I think fortnightly. And then we have like her support for the six weeks postpartum as well as like the lactation consultants from the private midwifery and yeah I have like a monthly circle with like women who are all due at the same time as me and honestly this has been such a huge thing in also supporting my mindset because I have a health professional who you know has worked in all different birthing environments has seen all different types of births um has seen different women approach birth differently in some being super prepared, some being underprepared, some just, you know, seeing it as a primal thing, some people seeing it as a um, medicalized thing. And she's just got all this like incredible 
knowledge and it's really really comforting for me to be able to have someone that I can honestly like I can message her 24 7 I've literally messaged her once but like the one hour sessions that we have together are really great because I can just ask her questions I can share with her my plans I can get to know her and I can build that relationship with her and it's just created so much safety for me and like I love that she understands my philosophy behind birth. I understand hers, yet we can meet in the middle. I know that she has my best interests at heart. We've discussed, you know, how, because I am having a hospital birth with the private midwife, which changes the, um, it actually changes how like my experience will be in comparison to just being a public patient. Um, but we've discussed like, you know, if there are any emergencies, like this is what could happen or this is the way that she will word things to me or yeah, it's just made me feel so much safer because I did have fear about birthing in a hospital, but now I'm actually feeling really confident in like just all the things that we've chosen and all the work I'm doing on my mindset. It's just really, really great. Um, another thing that I have been doing is a lot of self-education. I've been listening to a really cool podcast called The Great Birth Rebellion. There's also another one called The Midwives Cauldron, which I've actually only listened to like one or two of the episodes of that. Purely because I have been binging The Great Birth Rebellion. I think it's like a really, really, really incredible podcast. And I just really love the way it's delivered. Super straight to the point, evidence-based. Yeah, it's not like ads jumping in. I don't know. I just, I really like it. And I just pop that on when I'm like doing stuff around the house and things like that. Um, The Midwife's Cauldron is still good. I just haven't given it like the the time yet, but I'm getting there. Um, I've also been using my local library and like the book exchange store, which slay. I've always loved the book exchange, but like, it's really cool to go to like libraries free, obviously. And then like the book exchange, I always have so many books and like, I have a credit there and stuff. So like, that's really cool. Plus it's like way more sustainable for the earth, but, (laughs) um, reading lots of books, um, not like over absorbing information, but just kind of like things that make sense for me. So like hypnobirthing books obviously make sense because that's something I wanted to practice. And then just like a couple of just the basic like breastfeeding books and like birthing books and things like that. My private midwifery clinic also has like a little library in there, which I'm yet to check out, but I may not even get to it because I honestly do feel like I've got enough information now. Like I don't really feel like, I feel like first trimester, it's all new and you just want to learn everything. And then second trimester, you're like, okay, cool. I absorbed all this information. Um, now I just want to sort of start preparing myself for the transition. And then, sorry, I just heard my door open and I'm like, there's no one here, but it was my dog opening the door. She literally knows how to open the door, but it freaked me out for a split moment. Um, but yeah, I feel like second trimester, you kind of move from the, like wanting to know everything to just like integrating. Well, that's how it's felt for me. There are multiple other ways I have been preparing for labor and birth as well. I've been going to an osteopath regularly every three weeks since the very beginning of my pregnancy. I have been getting regular pregnancy massage. I start with a pelvic floor physio next week just to get everything checked out, make sure everything's all good, um, you know, get some exercises if necessary. Haven't been getting any pain. Um, I get like you know, the occasional, like my back will get really sore or my feet will be really sore if I've been on them all day. Um, but then it will kind of pass. I haven't had anything intense, but I do feel like it comes back to the way I've been supporting my body, which is super cool. I've been practicing a lot of self womb healing on myself, which also I feel like is really special. Um, doing some EFT tapping. What else have I been doing? I feel like I've just been really focusing on my health kind of thing. Like not to say I'm not eating like hundred percent like organic all the time. Like I'm still like eating very like nourishing meals, like 80, 20 rule kind of thing. But I don't know. I just feel like I'm preparing in different ways that I know are like good for me. And it doesn't mean that every woman should like prepare this much or this many different ways, but like, it's just what's working for me. The final thing I'm going to share that I have been implementing to support me for labor and birth is drinking raspberry leaf tea. So I started that in my second trimester and I up my dose when I get to my third trimester. For the meantime, I'm just doing just a normal like tea bag cup of raspberry leaf tea every single night, missing some nights, but not super strict on it purely because I am in my second trimester. Um, and it's okay to like not start it. Some people don't start it till like 36 weeks, but I have been starting that now. Like I started that a few weeks ago. That's been really a nice ritual actually to like 
just have a tea of the evening. Um, and I actually really enjoy the taste of it. I'm sure once I up my dose to have like the dose that you're supposed to have to like actually support the strengthening of your uterus and stuff in the later term of pregnancy, maybe my opinion will change on the taste of it, but that has been really nice. And yeah, I was advised to do that by a pelvic floor release worker who I have also been visiting for my pregnancy, who she does a lot of work with like womb cycles, like all the things. So that has been really good. And yeah, it's like things that like you don't have to do, but I'm just choosing to do. And it feels really aligned with me. I've been eating more dates, but like I'm going to have more of those like you're supposed to have six a day in your like third trimester or something. So I'll definitely like be more consistent with that later on in my pregnancy. But for now, I'm just having them here and there because dates soften the cervix, I think. And um, raspberry leaf tea just strengthens the uterus because it's actually the uterus that pushes the baby out, not like the pelvic floor. So I'm kind of like seeing a pelvic floor physio just to make sure my pelvic floor isn't like over tight or like under you know what I mean like I'm just (laughs) wanting to get everything just sort of checked in with because I'm just so grateful I have the resources available and that I'm in a position to be able to um like I said these aren't things like everyone has to do but for me it just feels really good and I'm just like why not like absolutely why not especially the regular massage and the regular osteo I'm like once I have this little man here I'm probably not gonna have too much time for myself to go and just like get a massage or get a facial or do the things like that so it's been really nice to just like nurture and nourish myself in those ways. Of course, Jai is like the best human ever and he will just like force me to go and get a massage if I'm in the need to. But, you know, at the moment I can just go, oh, I'm going to go get a massage tomorrow and just go get a massage. Like it's not going to be that simple soon. So that is like pretty much what I've been doing. Um, but yeah, I feel like that was like a nice short and sweet episode of like how I'm preparing for a natural labor and birth. I'm taking a very holistic approach to my pregnancy. Um, I am wanting to have a water birth and unmedicated and I have, I, I feel really positive about it. Like I'm just, I feel like that's like the mindset thing, right? It's like, I'm building my confidence every single day. I'm connecting to myself deeper and deeper. And I was actually with one of my mentors recently and she was telling me Like, it just makes sense that my pregnancy has been so blissful and it just makes sense that I don't have fear around birth. And she is just like, of course, you're going to have an incredible birth. Like the work I've been doing over the years and she supported me over the years with a lot of that like deep healing work. Um, she's just like, of course, like you've done so much work on your hormones. You've done so much work on your ancestral line and just like healing energetically. Um, and for her being a older woman who has worked in like the field of just like energy healing and all the things for many, many years, she is finding it a really cool thing to witness because she's like, this is just a whole new, like the ascension, like it's just a whole new thing of just like, wow, this is what it gets to be like if women actually choose to connect to their cycle and connect in with their body. Um, and yeah, I, when she was saying it to me as well, I was like, it's so cool. Like, I can't wait to sort of see where my business, like potentially, like redirects to in this journey of becoming a mom and like all of the things because I'm clearly like I'm gathering information and like wisdom along the way and it's just it's just so so cool but anyway I'm gonna stop rambling um I shall be back in your ears next Friday I'm gonna be back now um every four um, oh my gosh every fortnight every week I'm back for the podcast because I've honestly missed it so much and yeah Stay tuned. I'm going to have some really cool guest episodes coming up for the rest of the year. And yeah, that's all. Love you guys so much. And I'll be back in your ears next week. Bye.